Have you ever noticed how you never seem to have enough time to do everything you need to get done and how your to-do list never seems to get any shorter? Well, there's a solution to this problem and it doesn't involve figuring out how to squeeze another hour or two into your workday. The reason this problem exists in the first place has to do with something called Parkinson's Law. Once you understand what Parkinson's Law is, you can structure your days so you get more done in less time and still have time for rest, family, and recreation. As I've discussed in another video, conventional wisdom says that in order to get more work done, you just need to spend more hours working. That idea seems logical, right? But have you ever heard the phrase, work expands so as to fill the time available for its completion? This saying has come to be known as Parkinson's Law because it was first coined by British historian Cyril Northcote Parkinson. He first wrote about the idea in a 1955 article published in The Economist and later in his book, Parkinson's Law and Other Studies in Administration. I'm sure you can relate to the feeling of having more work to do than time available to do it in. Even if you don't feel that way all the time, you probably experience the feeling more often than not. Your to-do list never gets any shorter. In fact, even if you could somehow wave a magic wand and double the amount of time you have available every week, you'd still not have enough time to do everything you want to do. That's the irony of Parkinson's Law. To make matters worse, American culture overvalues the amount of time we spend working every week. We celebrate the martyr mentality where we suffer long hours working every week because it shows how valuable, dedicated, and hardworking we are or because we think it's somehow more honorable. On the flip side, taking time to rest or simply be alone with your thoughts is considered non-productive, a waste of time, or even selfish. When you have plenty of time to work on something, you subconsciously, and even sometimes consciously, give it less than your full effort and concentration. While you may not admit it to your boss, you know this is true. If you have a project that you know usually requires about 30 hours of effort, but you have 40 hours to do it in, what do you do? You tell your boss you have a little extra capacity so she can give you a little more work, right? No, if you're being honest with yourself, you'll admit that what you actually do is coast. You check your email more frequently, you get up and stretch or walk around more often, you take just a minute to read an interesting article you find online, you check sports scores, scores or stock prices once or twice, and generally work at a slower pace. You do all kinds of things that from a distance may look productive, but in reality are just filling those additional 10 hours. Whether you consciously rationalize it or it just happens, you allow yourself to behave this way because you know you have enough cushion or fat in your schedule to still get the work done by the deadline so you don't push very hard. This is a natural response because your brain is wired to conserve energy wherever and whenever possible. So anytime you don't absolutely have to do something, you exert the minimum amount of energy that's required. As a side note, for people with ADHD, Parkinson's law is even more pronounced. Their brain chemistry is such that they can't adequately focus on something unless they find the work enthralling or they have so little time left that they can, can't not focus on it. On the other hand, when you have barely enough or maybe even not enough time to get the work done, what happens? You usually laser focus and figure out a way to get it done, right? Sometimes that means you have to chain yourself to your desk, turn off the internet, put up a do not disturb sign, and listen to white noise with headphones to drown out nearby conversations, but it works. Thankfully, you don't have to go to these extremes. But when given no alternatives other than to do the work now or risk the consequences, you figure out a way to stop doing all those little things that eat away at your productivity every day. The trick is to learn how to harness that focus without burning out. It's a delicate balance because shorter durations can cause you to sacrifice quality in the name of finishing the work. However, there's usually quite a bit of wiggle room where you can cut your typical time down by 30 or maybe even 40% and still do good work. That's the basic premise of an experiment conducted by author Chris Bailey. He spent an entire year doing dozens of different productivity experiments on himself to find out what works and what doesn't and blogging about it along the way. He went on to write the book The Productivity Project to share everything he learned during his experience. During his year of research, he conducted experiments on everything from wake up times to meditation to productivity systems like getting things done to the effects of internet access and phone usage. In one experiment, he tested the validity of Parkinson's law to see whether there is an ideal number of work hours per week. To do this, he spent four weeks alternating between 90 hour and 20 hour work schedules while still maintaining the same overall workload. Each day, he not only recorded what he got done, but he also quantified and recorded his energy and focus levels, how easily he got distracted, how productive he felt, and whether he accomplished what he planned to for the day. 
Keeping track of this information gave him much more valuable insight into each work strategy, allowing him to determine how effective they were. Based on the logic of more hours worked equals more work accomplished, he should have quadrupled the amount of work he got done in the 90 hour weeks versus his 20 hour weeks, but the crazy thing is that he only got slightly more work done. This is Parkinson's law in action. One other subtle but very important takeaway from his experiment was that even though he accomplished virtually the same amount of work on either schedule, he felt more productive during the 90 hour weeks. As the saying goes, perception is reality. So because you feel more productive when you work longer hours, your natural response to an ever-growing to-do list is just to add new tasks to the pile and hunker down. Most people don't look at their work from the perspective of Parkinson's law. They simply try to figure out how to do more in the same amount of time. But as I've discussed in my previous video, your effectiveness gradually wanes as you work longer hours. It's a paradox because you feel more effective while you're actually getting less effective. Unfortunately, you don't notice the decline. That's because our brains are wired to notice things that change quickly or significantly, but they aren't very good at picking up subtle or gradual changes. So why do we keep banging our heads against this wall? It's a lack of information bias. Since you can't measure something that hasn't happened, you don't know how much you would have gotten done or how productive you would be if you gave yourself less time and or eliminated time wasters and distractions. For example, you can't intuitively quantify how productive you would be if you didn't look at your phone a thousand times a day because one, most people would rather give up oxygen than do that, and two, humans are terrible at making these kinds of predictions. What you can do is test it by methodically trying different approaches for a defined amount of time, collecting data like Chris Bailey did, and seeing what kind of results you get. Or, if you don't feel like going through that process, you can trust the results of other people who have already done it. It's worth noting, by the way, that Chris Bailey isn't the only person to test Parkinson's law. Other people have done so and obtained similar results. If you're skeptical of their results and don't think you would have the same experience, you can test it for yourself. Having a healthy dose of skepticism is a good thing and is a vital part of the scientific method. What is not helpful is just assuming these results don't apply to you because you're different. If this phenomenon holds true for other human beings, there's a very good chance it applies to you as well. When you understand Parkinson's law, you can use it to minimize the time you waste every day. So you have more time for the things that matter. But just as important, you can leverage it to focus on getting the really important things done in the time you do have. You need to get rid of the mindset that you are ever going to finish your to-do list. If you're like most other people, that idea is a fantasy. It's like trying to reach the horizon. It always stays tantalizingly out of reach. So how do you put this knowledge to use in your life? For some people, it's as simple as setting aggressive deadlines for yourself when you plan your work. Unfortunately, for many people, myself included, this approach doesn't work very well. That's because the part of your brain that decides to set the tight deadline lives with the part of your brain that wants to take it easy, so it knows when a deadline is artificially contrived. Consequently, it doesn't feel a true sense of urgency when it knows there won't be any consequences if you don't finish on time. If you struggle with motivation to stick with artificial deadlines because they don't create enough urgency, there are several things you can do. You could build competition into your work. If you have a particular activity that takes too long but you can never seem to get it done any faster, find another person who does the same kind of task. Then you could compete to see who can get it done faster each day. You could apply this concept to anything from studying to house cleaning to writing. If your vice is the internet, you can utilize technology to block access to sites and programs that you usually struggle to resist. There are dozens of apps and browser plugins that provide this service. Some are free and others are not, and different ones offer different features and capabilities. I'm not gonna go into reviews of those apps here because that's not the topic of this video, but they can augment your self-control if you're addicted to the continuous stream of information that is the internet. Another thing you can do is use rewards to provide an additional sense of urgency. If you have a task that normally takes you four hours to complete, give yourself three hours and tell yourself that if you finish by that time, you can do something you really enjoy, like reading or playing a game, for that fourth hour. This is a great approach because not only do you get your work done in the same amount of time it normally takes, but you're compounding the benefits by recharging. If you strategically choose your recharging activity, you can compound the effect on your self-control even more by doing something you find really interesting. And I've talked about this in another video. Another thing you could do is commit to something publicly, especially if it will require you to publicly report on your progress, like a race or a weight loss challenge with regular and or final public weight. I've discussed this concept of using public accountability to your advantage in another one of my videos. Just to clarify, in the internet age, the term public doesn't have to mean in person. It simply means that your progress will be shared with your friends or even the whole world. You could get an accountability partner. 
Ideally, you want someone who is comfortable giving you tough love when you aren't putting forth the level of effort that you commit to. But just knowing that you have to report on your progress to someone will enhance your motivation and the likelihood that you'll stay focused. This is the reason that people who have diet or fitness goals like to have a partner or buddy to go on the journey with them. This tactic is well suited to ongoing commitments like working out every day. However, you could apply it to Parkinson's Law by having someone to discuss your work plan with each day and then having a couple of accountability check-ins to keep you on track. Another thing you could do is use a service like the website Stick. This site uses the idea of an anti-goal, which puts some amount of your money into escrow. Then, if you don't achieve your goal or stick to your behavior change, the money is donated to an organization whose values or mission you disagree with. You can either monitor and report on your own progress or appoint what they call a referee to grade you. This tactic is also best for ongoing commitments, but you could use it to make sure you complete a project by a certain date so that it doesn't drag on indefinitely, which would help you with your daily motivation. For example, if you have had a goal of writing a book, you could use Stick to make sure you work diligently on it every day. By the way, even if you don't plan on using this service, it's worth checking out just to see all the different things that people commit to via this service. The goals themselves are all publicly viewable, even though you can conceal your identity. I want to share an interesting side note on this topic of Parkinson's Law. As I was researching and laying out the rough draft of this video, I had gotten ahead of my normal writing schedule, so I had some extra time to finish it. So what do you think I did? Rather than finishing it up early so I could move on to other important tasks, I found myself adding and expanding on different thoughts more than I normally would do. I did all of this in the name of producing a better, more informative post. In reality, what happened was that I just ended up filling up the extra time that I had available and finished in the same time I normally give myself to complete my posts. So what started out as a typical 800 to 1000 word video became more than three times as long, about 2700 words. Parkinson's law is subtle because your mind will come up with all kinds of very rational sounding reasons for why you're using the extra time. Sometimes you won't even notice it happening. But even when you do notice it while it's happening, you don't always do anything about it because you make a very compelling argument to yourself why it's okay this time. I encourage you to play around with the idea of Parkinson's law to stretch yourself and see what's possible. What do you have to lose? If you give yourself four hours to do something that usually takes you eight and you get it done in six with an hour or two of play thrown in, you still win. Let me know what you think about this idea by leaving a comment below. If you like this video, please share it with your friends. If you want to learn even more about how you can supercharge your motivation, check out my website by clicking on the logo. My goal is to help you with your motivation challenges. If you have a specific problem you'd like help with, you can reach out to me directly at rich at the motivation mindset .com. Thanks for watching.